Hello everybody and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 where I was just writing a whole essay on everything I'd done to my friend, like to like I told her what I'd done. Uh, and hey, no, nope, I don't want to close the door. Um, and I was explaining like my paladin's, you know, thinking and everything and what everything that went down and um, like why my paladin justified it and she was like, oh, like that's kind of like uh, Samara from Mass Effect, right? Like a Justicier, or a Justicar, rather. Justicier in this game. But I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I actually, like, my jaw dropped. I was like, that's kind of how it is, right? Where there's like, there's like a precedent. Like, she felt she was obligated to do this thing. Like, Samara even talks about, like, she has to, like, you know, kill a father who was, like, an, like an excellent father to his daughter, but, like, had to kill him because he had done something terrible. You know what I mean? Like, and, like, the code gave her like the justification essentially for it and like she, not only like, the obligation rather to do it you know and, and I feel like that's very that is that sums up very well kind of how my character is dealing with this uh, we're gonna just walk out I guess for a second and see if anything happens but we do we leave the yeah heart of the absolute alive thanks to you you did well to defeat Ketherick but Ketherick was only the first I figured I'd get form. something. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need... Yeah, them. well, two of them are dead. I, this, maybe, you know what, maybe we say this, because right now we're having a really hard time. We just lost two people. Uh, not that, you know, Jihiro is technically a companion, but, like, I know she was going to be. And even if nothing else, like, she's a formidable, famous hero who just died in this assault, you know. And I just had to kill a terrorist in cold blood, which even though he's probably a terrorist, like, or gonna be a terrorist, like, you gotta struggle with that, right? Like, he hadn't committed a crime yet, but it's like, but well, you know, like, you just want to let him do that first, and then you lock him in arms, you know, or lock him in irons or whatever. Anyway... Enough lives have been lost. I don't want to send others to their deaths. And if they died, would their deaths not count? But they need not die, for they would have you. You have the makings of a leader. Your actions have already inspired those around you. Halsin's strength and loyalty will bolster you in times of need. But if we are to succeed, we will need others. Will there be anyone left when we arrive in the city? Even if the buildings are demolished, there are always survivors. There are always those who... Oh my gosh, is the city going to be demolished? Baldur's Gate may not know it yet, but its fate is bound to I was ours. hoping to explore it. Seek on its streets those whose purpose aligns with our own and invite them to our cause. Together, we will put an end to the Absolute. The chosen. All. Okay, I figured there'd be something going on out there. Let me check something really quick. I was gonna maybe try to turn the brightness up. But I have the brightness up pretty high on my own computer as far as I know. Alright, well. To do the round. So the goal is to find more friends, not that there's anybody. Will arrive the oh, okay, so we are going to try to do that. Moonrise, guard, key. I like how people turn into pouches. Uh, first things first. I need a nap. Hang on. First, I am going to hard save. Because I have a feeling if Gale leaves too, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. <sighs> oh, where is he? I'm not going to... I'm gonna wait for this to go down. Oh, Arabella will probably be leaving soon. Did he just, like, leave? Is he gone? It's not like I knew I was gonna be meeting the Absolute. I think we've done rather a good thing. Ooh, okay. Here. A welcome change. To give this land a sliver of hope amongst so much despair. Why? My, even my my plain clothes are covered in blood. Oh, okay. Maybe he'll get mad at me tonight. I don't know. Or maybe he doesn't know 
that it's, um... I guess he could have blown up the Elder Brain there, but I don't think it would have worked. I think his thing is more of an Act 3 thing, if it's gonna happen. I guess I can take care of my... I believe in you. Thaniel rests well. He's healing very rapidly, now that Oliver has returned to him. Um... So what happened to Oliver exactly? Did Thaniel absorb him? No more than my right hand can absorb my left. Oliver is helping Thaniel to recover. They both lie dormant, like trees awaiting spring. Once the curse is lifted, they can stand as one or as a pair. Whatever they wish, oh, nice. I hope they will remain as a pair. It will be good for them both to have a friend once I'm gone. Still, I would like to return here someday, see Thaniel and Oliver again. In my meditations, or perhaps in person, if the Oak Father wills it. I hope he does. Me too. I hope I don't have to kill you for something. Uh, so when will the curse actually be lifted? I can't say for certain, but we'll see it come to pass long before this place recedes behind us. Don't worry. All is at hand. We can depart whenever you're ready. Ooh, okay, so what now? You got what you wanted after all. I have. But perhaps there is more that I want. Oh yeah? Anyway. Yeah? Yeah? Once <laughs> lifted, nature can take its course without me. Yeah? I belong at your Do side. you? Then you know, there's more what you want. What is <laughs> What is what is that? Not what. But all in I think I haven't lost I haven't lost this route. Um I'm glad I could help. We're both covered in blood. I just read a book, Paladin Strength, super good by T. Kingfisher. I love so much of her work. Um she has actual, like, adult characters that are, like, in their 30s and, like, late 30s, some of them, like, early 30s, late 30s, who have, like, lived through life experiences, you know, are just trying to, you know, live their best lives. And they have, like, fairly realistic romance plot lines. They're kind of, like, 50-50 romance, 50-50 plot. I'm not usually a romance person. Like, I like to have a thread of romance, but not, like, the main focus of a story. Um, but there's, like, beheadings and demons and stuff, so it's super interesting. <laughs> and, um, in the second one, oh my gosh, where was I going with that? Um, oh, wow, uh, one of two of the characters, you know, the two main characters, uh, there's a battle. And they defeat a bunch of bandits, and like in the heat of the moment, they kiss. So they're like covered in blood, and, you know, and everything. And like, but it's just like your, you know, your blood's pumped up, and like you're like, you know, on the edge of your seat. That that whole like that survival thing that happens, where people sometimes get very physically aware of other people. And uh, anyway, that just reminds me of this right here, sort of, where we're both like covered in the blood of our enemies, and we just got through with a massive fight. And Halson's like, hey, and I'm like, hey, hey, hey. hey. I'm glad I could help. I knew I could put my faith in you. If only we had met soon. Truly, I wouldn't have had to rescue you, but you know, it's fun to it's fun to be the one who's um the the damsel rescuing the prince, you know? And you are doing well, I assume? Your path leads away from me, I sense. Be safe. Perhaps one day you will see the fruits that your victory has sown here. Uh, he creeps me out a little tiny bit. Um, his face doesn't look fully rendered at all times. Um, and the voice, not, not a big fan. Not a big fan of the voice. Oh, Carwag, things are tough. Wish we could stay and see what this place will be like without the shadows. But it's beautiful. No rest for the wicked, huh? Ain't that the truth, darling. Uh, tell me more about your relationship with Gortash. Let me just bring the mood down. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid. Brawling my way through the city. I can see it. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work, guarding some indoorsy type with lots of enemies. Seemed like easy money. 
so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I like that. Not like that, you know. Yeah. Just it felt like a good fit. Right, right. I kept him safe and he paid me well. Well enough to move into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future. I respected him. Trusted him. And he returned that trust, that respect. His life was in my hands, and I took that seriously. What a foolish thing he did. With Zariel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not quite kid. The next, I was burning up in a Vernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel laughed. Said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil, evil bastard. True evil sometimes hides beneath a facade of charisma and kindness, and that makes it almost even worse, right? Than just like the really obvious stuff. Oh, Scratch, how you doing? Hope you're keeping well, friend. I am. Pets. I mean, as well as can be expected. Give a good pet. It's been a rough, it's been a rough act, you know? You smell very delicious. But I I'm like, mm, you. thank you. I know. I do have a bunch of uh, blood on me. The shadows are lifted. Finally, we can breathe free. I am really surprised that people don't have more to say just in regular camp. The curse is broken and the shadows are lifting. In time, these lands will heal. Yeah, are you cool with that? I mean, I, I don't think she has any reason to not be cool with that, but it's interesting that she pointed it out. I never saw myself as a banisher of shadows before. I've missed you too. <laughs> I was always more of a lurker in, historically. Yeah, my stalker. <laughs> in the shadows. Uh... I think I've already asked this, but we'll ask about Casador's ritual. The thing that will decide my fate forevermore. Yeah. Yes, it's been on my mind. Why? <laughs> uh, I just want to know what your intentions are. Or do you think we can stop it? Well, in theory, it's simple. Destroy Casador, stop ritual. That's assuming we want to stop the ritual. So you want to become a god? Is that? Well, I've obviously thought about it. If I was the one who completed the ritual, I'd have such power. And I could walk in the sun without fear I'd turn into a mind flare. Um, and the soul, yeah, I want, because it's his, it's his, like, brothers and sisters, kind of. And the souls that need to be sacrificed? I don't relish it, but my... Siblings lured thousands of people to their deaths over the years. I doubt Baldur's Gate would miss. Yeah, that's not the point. The point is you. <laughs> of course, I don't even know if I could complete the ritual. It may be impossible, but it certainly is tempting. No, I can't let him go through with that. That requires. I think it requires more sacrifices, not just his siblings. I'm gonna maybe have to kill Asterion too. Great, I'm just gonna murder my entire party. I'm not happy about it. Meme and talk to the moon lesbians. See if they make me feel better. There you are. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. Come closer. You were cleaner earlier. Step closer, yeah. Feel my voice rattle your bones as I proclaim our We're both victory. paladins, so I feel like this is Moon Maiden Saluna. Hear me. Catherick Thorn, traitor, apostle of Merkel, is dead at last. My mate, Most High, darling Isabel, is safe and well. Safe 
and well and return to my embrace. This is adorable. Blessings upon the slayer of the wicked one. Where's the silver light, the moon magic? No. I think, okay, so I am a paladin. I'm a former paladin, and I have just done something very questionable for a paladin -y thing. But like I said, she's drawn to Karlak kind of for the nature-y thing. She's drawn to house and kind of for the nature-y thing that was her former, like, you know, paladin existence. I feel like she's drawn bittersweet to these, these entities of divine power, you know? Like, so being a part of this would be bitter and sweet at the same time. That's sort of a very complicated feeling. I couldn't have done it without you. We are a powerful party indeed. Faerun itself trembles at our touch. Please, please join my party. My darling Isabel says we will stay allied at your side. I she's so it. cute. She's so fun. This is, oh, she's like, somewhat speaks, like, speaks somewhat archaically. She's so paladin-y, by the way. Like, this is kind of the paladin I was kind of like, they like, sort of like the cliche, like, speaks their mind, you know? Like, it, like we need to go, like, you know, our bodies and words must, <laughs> must intertwine or whatever. And freaking Isabel's like, oh my gosh, don't say it out loud like that. But, like, the paladins are just, like, living, like, uh, hearts on their sleeves, you know what I mean? Like, I think that comes from being, like, like, having your faith on your sleeve, essentially, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's your power, you know? And, like, you see no reason to hold back anything, not in love, not in war, and I, I find that fun. I do find that fun, and she's so funny. There's still a great deal about you, or no, how do you intend to spend your newfound freedom? I am free from my bonds, but not my duty. The dead three are risen. The dead two remain. I mean, the gods. You must face them. Will you? I will. Yes. There's still a great deal about you. I don't, I don't think she's going to be a companion, but she'll probably help. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Do you share? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They're too cute. Um, are you really Saloon's daughter? Do I not radiate with my mother's brightness, her glory? There can be no doubt. I am of her silvered flesh, her celestial. I thought Asmar were born from mortal humans, but she was god touched, not born of a god. Uh, would you rather be willing to aid us in the fight against the Dead Three? Because Merkel's still alive. Like, he still exists as an entity. He's probably weakened because we killed his chosen, but, like, he's still around. Why, she already has. She has brought her sword to your side. Dame Aelin. Okay. So mighty are her wonders, her great wisdom. Together, we will set this fair land free of tyranny and murder. I can just see Isabel over there just being like, because she seems a much more like, I loved her sense of humor, right? She's, Isabel's sense of humor is really down to earth, kind of a dry one. So their, their pairing is even more better, you know, where it's just like, Isabel gets like swept off her feet, but it's also like rolling, maybe like at least rolling her eyes, like, oh my goodness, like, nothing about rolling her eyes, I don't know how to say it, but just being like, you know, yep, that's her, <laughs> that's the one, <laughs> you know. How did you come to be trapped in the shadow, Phil? Etheric Thorn, father of my one and only love, enslaver of Dame Aelin. Catherick Thorn never did trust me, even when he worshipped the Moon Maiden. He was threatened by my love for Isabel, by her love for me. When she died, curse the day, the hour, we each of us mourned bitterly. But Ketherick's pain could be touched by no aid, no boundary. He turned to wretched Shah, the Lady of Loss, for relief. And she whispered into his ear, poisoning his mind. He and his loathsome advisor, Balthazar, lured me into the Shadowfell. Claimed they'd found someone in need of my aid. There, they trapped me in their infernal cage. I was killed. Murdered, made dead over and over and over by justicias of every make and kind. I was reborn, for it is my nature. And Catherick fed upon my immortality. Wow, all the while. so she had like a double purpose. The, 
root is dead. And we, we live. So Isabel's like, I hope my father found peace. And I bet you Isabel, especially with the way she treated his corpse, was like, mm, no, nah, I hope he suffers forever. Dang it, I don't, can I not ask her about? Be gone, friend. I have a darling to adore. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Wait, um... You should join my camp permanently. We can fight the powers of evil together. Our thoughts are as one, my friend. You must face the chosen of Bane and Bar. I will do my part to see them laid low. I have questions for you. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Mm. Hang on, let me try again. Be gone, friend. I have a darling. You found I am freedom. You must face them. Dang it, I was gonna maybe... Gosh dang it. I can't ask her about Isabel. Gosh freaking dang it. I can't believe it. I can't believe Aelin is here. And my father. I heard what happened. What he become. That's gotta be so rough. Him. You set him free. You set Aelin free. And Can we ask what you are? Are you undead? Here, okay, I was hoping we would have the history, but I wanted to get I wanted to get Aelin's perspective on it too because she's so forthright. I hate that. That's one of the things with this game is I can't really tell sometimes. Like, there's some where you can tell, like you can kind of say, like, oh, okay, the conversation is leading to a dead end. I have to pick one of these, and I won't get a chance to ask the others, you know. But on that, that was just like a bunch of questions that you just talk to people in camp about, and like I lost it, like. That doesn't, that's not, I don't like that. Like, I don't know, I don't like that there, there's apparently an invisible limit to my questions sometimes that don't make any sense. You and Aelin seem to have a lot of history. What happened? A great deal. But still, some of the details elude me. Catherick Thorne is, was, my father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saruna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself. Tell me, do you believe in love at first sight? I don't, actually. I certainly believe you were star starstruck, at least. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'll say. <laughs> you sound like my father. But it was more than that. This was no mere attraction. It was not. Uh huh. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. That's gotta be rough. I understand it's strange. There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. It was natural. Then. And this is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how, why. Interesting. But all was black, black, black. And she wasn't even taken by Next saloon. I, knew, I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air. I saw shadows. And then my father's face. So changed. So hideously warped. So he really loved her to the point of like not even wanting to share her with others. He was all, she was all he had left maybe of her mother, but I think more than that, he loved Isabel for herself and didn't want to lose her. He'd already lost his wife, right? Even losing her to love, to somebody else who loved her. He didn't want that, you know? Um, and a father's love for a daughter can be a very powerful thing, but in this instance, definitely got twisted somehow although to be fair we don't know how she died probably maybe he felt her death her death was so was in unjust somehow i would think her soul would have gone to saloon or something she was she was bound to her in some ways you know um but apparently she just was in a void um oh my gosh he i mean that's no, I don't believe that at all. Only a monster or his own daughter from the grave. I think that most fathers out there, if given the chance, would try. If there if there was a way, you know what I mean, in real life, to like bring your loved one back, like people would do it. You know, it wouldn't necessarily need to be a monster. But he'd be kind of chosen a Merkel. I didn't know that then, but I could see the change in him. He told me we'd be together now, 
said that Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak, could only run. I found last light within the shadows, made a shelter there, prayed my father wouldn't find me. By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years. That my father was the source of the horrors plaguing this land, my home. I couldn't tell her who I was. I had to protect them. And myself. No matter what. So she wasn't part of the Flaming Fist. I thought she was, like, with them and, like, came here... It like was drawn back, maybe like maybe didn't know why she was drawn in, but then figured it out, you know. Um, but no, she had been hanging out there, and somehow her father didn't find her in the orb of, you know, moon, <laughs> moon magic. Uh, previous to this, but like, I'm also like, not was she in there for days, weeks, months, you know? Um. Because the the shadow thing's been going on for a long time, so she must have just been brought back, like, very recently. Right? Like, super recently. But how? How was she brought back? Understandable. It's all out in the open now. And with my father dead, I have nothing to fear. Except for Aelin. She needs healing. Rest. I'm grateful for your help. Your friendship. I hope we won't intrude on your hospitality too long. But I'm grateful for a safe place to... Well... Just to be. Uh, also, Jahira knew about you. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. It's been a long century. Okay. Well, I'm glad I asked that question about her and Aelin first. I think that's everybody then. Oh no, I haven't talked to No, I did talk to Lazelle, she just didn't say anything. Isabel, the steam, Oathbreaker, yeah, he's sitting there. The reminder of my sins. Alright, time to go to sleep and see what shenanigans await us. Why am I still barefoot? I just can't seem to put shoes on. I don't know why. It's fine. I'm an elf? Question mark? I walk around barefoot? <laughs> that really? Really? N nothing happened during that sleep. I swear, I can already feel a change in the air. Like the curse itself knows its time is short. Okay, bye. Um, do you have anything to say to me? How can I help? Oh. Oh, I do need to respec Gale, but I kind of I want to wait till the start of Act Three because if Gale's gonna leave me, I don't want to put forth the effort of um, you know doing anything with him. And we're so overburdened. Oh, I am, anyway. Golly. I don't want to do anything with the inventory. Anyway, we need to go over here. Well, let me do a hard save again. We'll just pop on over there. Well, actually, I am gonna go ahead and call it here, cliffhanger, uh, because I, hopefully this video is not too long and not too short. But thank you all for joining me on this. I appreciate it, despite all the the loss. <laughs> but uh... and with that, we'll go ahead and cut it off there. This is again just sort of the generic outro I'm doing while I'm in Italy. Uh, some of these episodes will be a little shorter, some of them will be a little longer, uh, but I did my best just trying to make sure I had enough while I was going to be gone. 
Um, but I hope you all enjoyed the episode. And really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fame, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my Sapling Tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I very much appreciate it as well. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my Forest Tier patron, who has gone above and beyond and is supportive of me in the channel and who I truly cannot thank enough. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.